Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me again today. Hope you've had a good week. You know, I want to begin by sharing just a little bit of a personal experience with you. When I was around 10 years old or so, uh, every night after dinner, I was given the chore of washing the dishes from dinner. Now I have to tell you, I hated washing dishes. This was long before there were automatic dishwashers. This was before there were non-stick skillets and pots and pans. Uh, this was when the cube steak and the fried chicken and all those kind of things stuck to the bottom of the cast iron skillet and you had to use a scouring pad to pry it off because it was as hard as concrete. Uh, but you know what? Every night it was the same old thing for me. I would wash the dishes and my younger brother would dry the dishes. Night after night went on for probably a couple of years. And uh, I think it scarred me for life because I don't like doing the same thing over and over again. I don't like doing the same old stuff. So I'd like to share with you a story today from Luke's Gospel that I believe will illustrate for us that there's value in doing the same old stuff over and over and over. You know, I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version today. If you have a Bible and would like to join along, uh, that's great. Yours might be a little bit different translation than mine, but I think we'll be able to track with each other just fine. So we're going to start Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, and we want to read this story and this, uh, this occurrence that happened with Jesus and Peter. So Luke, chapter 5 verses one through three, this is what it tells us. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land and he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. So this was very typical of Jesus's ministry. He would start with some public speaking and a crowd would begin to gather. And sometimes those crowds swelled and swelled into the thousands. In fact, we know on one occasion it was over 5,000 and on another occasion it was over 4,000. That, that group of 5,000, that's where he did the miraculous feeding of the 5,000. But Jesus is preaching along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, the northern shore, when the crowds start to form and they kind of squeeze him in. He's, he's probably on the beach there. So rather than contend with the crowd, Jesus notices Simon Peter's boat and he knows Peter. Peter's one of Jesus's early disciples. So he asked Peter to, to shove off a bit. So they do. And in doing that, Jesus creates kind of a, a natural amphitheater, if you will. There's him speaking from the boat, um, and the people then are gathered along the shoreline listening to what he has to say. But do you notice with me that the fishermen are out of their boats and they're cleaning their nets? Um, these were probably some of Jesus' other early disciples probably Andrew, who was Simon Peter's brother, and then their fishing partners, James and John. Well, those guys, they continue their work, letting Jesus do his thing. They're cleaning their fishing nets. And, and you know, sometimes it's just as religious and just as pious to be washing the nets as it is listening to Jesus's teaching. It's a necessary thing, even though it seems like the same old stuff all the time, but it's a necessary thing. Our story continues in Luke chapter 5, verse 4. This is what it tells us. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. So Jesus asked Peter for a favor. Hey, go out into the deeper water, Peter. Now, remember, Jesus had just finished preaching to the people along the shoreline. So whatever the reason is uh, for asking Peter to go out into the deeper water, it was for Peter's sake 
and for Peter's benefit. You know, a seasoned fisherman would tell you that you're not going to catch many fish near the shoreline. Maybe you'll catch a couple of small fish, but you know, Peter had been fishing all night and hadn't caught anything. The big fish, the schools of fish, they're out in the deeper water. Peter wants a load of fish. He's, and if he wants it, he's gonna have to go out to where they are. Again, he's already been out there and done that, the same old stuff all night, not catching anything. You know, what it takes to be a successful fisherman um, is the same thing it takes to be a successful fisher of men. And we'll see this. And Peter will see it too in his interaction with Jesus. We continue Luke chapter 5, verse 5. This is what it says. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. Now, even though Peter doesn't say it, I can imagine some old crusty fisherman coming along and saying, what? You, a carpenter from Nazareth, are going to come here and teach me how to fish? You don't go fishing in the morning after the sun's up and the heat of the day is set in. You got to fish at night, man, which is what we've been doing and we've caught nothing. Now, Peter doesn't say that, but somebody else might. In fact, you know what? I might have been one of those people that would say that, having my doubts about casting out into the deeper water. You know, it probably didn't make much sense in the moment for Peter, but he's willing to do it because of his friendship with Jesus. Now, I can't tell you if Peter has developed a love for Jesus yet, but he certainly considers him a friend and a good teacher. And it didn't matter at this point that Peter and Andrew and James and John had failed at their night of fishing. There's a great lesson here for us. Peter did just what Jesus asked him to do. And lots of times, that's all God wants from us also, is to do the same old stuff, do what he wants. It's to Peter's advantage to do this. And you know what? It's always, always, always to our advantage to do what the Lord wants also. You know, it was to my advantage to wash those dishes each night after dinner, and the reason for that was so that my mom would have clean dishes to cook the next night's meal. But, but that didn't register in my little 10-year-old mind. Uh, nevertheless, it would have been to my advantage. So our story continues in Luke chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. This is what it tells us. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. Imagine that. You know what? Last weekend, I watched a Tarzan movie. Do you remember the old Tarzan movies? Uh, you probably remember Johnny Weissmiller and Buster Crab as Tarzan. Um, uh, but in this movie that I watched last weekend from 2016, um, Alexander Skarsgård, plays Tarzan. And there were several scenes in the movie where Tarzan did his trademark call, and you, you know what that sounds like. Um, and when he did that, the animals came to him. The elephants, the lions, the crocodiles, they all came uh, to Tarzan. Um, now, I don't know if Jesus did something like that, but, but, Here's what happens. A school of fish shows up where Peter and the gang had fished last night and had caught nothing. I think Jesus kind of made that happen. You know, it was more fish than they could handle. It was something they didn't expect. Peter might have been thinking to himself prior to this, man, going out and fishing again this afternoon, this morning, this is the same old stuff I did last night. But the lesson for us is clear here, I think. You know what? We have to keep doing the same old stuff over and over and over. 
all the time because we never know when it's going to produce results. Somebody might say, you know what? I've prayed the same thing every day a thousand times with no results. Well, you know, a thousand days, that's less than three years. And the results, well, the results might come on day 1,001. Now, this is a lesson in trust and faith and belief that Jesus knows what he's doing with our lives, and he knew what he was doing with Peter's life as well. He asked us to be faithful in doing what he's asked us to do or has called us to do. And it may seem like the same old stuff all the time. It reminds me of what the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Here's what Paul said. He said, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor, your labor is not in vain. As ministers of the gospel, you and I must continue to let down our nets, even though we've done the same old stuff for a long time and we've caught nothing. We have to keep sharing the good news of the gospel with others. We have to keep loving others, especially when it's difficult. We have to continue to serve others and sow good things into other people's lives. And then let Jesus place the school of fish exactly where they need to be so that we can catch them. We never stop doing the same old stuff because it didn't produce results last night, but it might produce results this morning. Well, the story continues. Luke chapter 5, verses 8 through 10. This is what it says. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Peter is so awestruck with this miracle that he bows before Jesus and acknowledges his lack of faith, his lack of belief in what Jesus had asked him to do. And Jesus met Peter in the ordinary, everything days of life. Um, it's the same old stuff where he met Peter, fishing. You know, what seemed impossible last night became a reality in the light of day, a harvest of fish where there had been no fish. It was used by Jesus to reinforce his call upon Peter's life that Peter would become a fisher of men. Well, our story continues. Luke 5, verses 10 and 11. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to the land, they left everything and followed him. Well, this experience was for Peter. It was Jesus' assurance that he would guide and direct the path in which Peter would move to become a fisher of men, a catcher of men. He was giving Peter a glimpse of the future that would require him doing the same old stuff every day, every day, of preaching the gospel to the whole world. You know, when I read this, I recognize this wasn't the only time Jesus did this with Peter. Um, Jesus did it another time after the resurrection when Peter had gone back to being a fisherman. Jesus did the same thing to remind him of his calling. We see it in John's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 4 through 6. Jesus has been crucified, dead, put in the grave, and resurrected after three days. He's walking among his disciples. This is what John records. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore. 
Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish? And they answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of the fish. And Peter was on that boat. You know what? People need the Lord today. People need salvation. People need hope. That's where you and I come in. Us doing the same old stuff all the time of telling them about the Savior of the world until Jesus brings about the harvest. Would you have a prayer with me as we close today? God, we come to you and we ask you to help us to be committed and faithful followers of Jesus, to sharing the gospel with people, to sharing the good news of salvation with people over and over again for as long as it takes until you bring people into your kingdom. Help us by your spirit to do that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a good weekend. I'll see you the next time. God bless all of you.